Hello! In this video, we're going to discuss increasing and decreasing functions and the first derivative test. Let's begin with some definitions. A function f is non-decreasing, or a function is increasing on an interval i, if for every s and t in the interval where s is less than t, then f of s is less than or equal to f of t. And let's take a look at an example. I could say if I've got some interval, here's s, Here's t. f of s is less than or equal to f of t. And that would be true for any pairs of s sub 1, s sub 2, or t sub, s sub 1, t sub 1. If I've got an interval where the function is increasing, any two pairs of input where one is less than or equal to other, the output will also follow suit where one is less than the other in that particular order. If I want to eliminate places where there might be a flat portion on the graph, f is strictly increasing on the interval i when, when s of, is less than t, then f of, f of s is less than f of t. I can also consider that a function f is non-increasing or decreasing on an interval i if for every s and t in the interval with s less than t, f of s is greater than or equal to f of t, or f is strictly decreasing on the interval i if when s is less than t, then f of t is less than f of s. So again, if I want to draw a graph, to illustrate this, if I have a pair of axes, here's s, here's t, here's an example where this graph, y equals f, y equals f of x, where f of s is greater than or equal to f of t or f of t is less than or equal to f of s. Let's let f be a function that is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b. If f prime is greater than 0 on the open interval from a to b, then f is increasing on the closed interval from a to b. If f prime, if the derivative of f is less than 0, it's negative, if f prime is negative on the open interval from a to b, then f is decreasing on the closed interval from a to b. Well, what does this mean? f prime, the derivative, can be interpreted as the slope of the function or the slope of the tangent line to the curve uh, with respect to x or at a particular x value. So I'm saying that if the slopes are positive, for every value on an interval, then that function must be increasing. Similarly, if the slopes are negative, then the function is decreasing. So one strategy we can take when we're considering where is a function increasing, where is a function decreasing, is that we can consider, first of all, where are the critical points for a function. Just a reminder that the critical points are where a derivative equals 0 or where the derivative does not exist. We can let those critical points subdivide the domain or the interval for which the function is defined. Then when the derivative is continuous on any subinterval, the derivative will be strictly positive or strictly negative. In other words, there aren't going to be any other additional uh, partitions once we've already divided the interval based on the critical points. So f prime will have the same sign, either positive or negative, on an entire subinterval. And if we evaluate the derivative at a point in the subinterval, and for example it's positive, then the derivative is positive on that entire subinterval. So let's consider 
An example, suppose we let g of t equal t cubed minus 8 quantity squared, and we'll let it be defined on the real number line. We're not going to restrict it, restrict the domain in this case. First of all, we want to identify the critical points of g, and then we want to indicate the intervals on which g increases and g decreases. So let's first of all, let's consider the critical points. Recall that the critical points are where g prime equals 0 or g prime does not exist. And we see that if we take the derivative of g with respect to time, first of all, we need to use the chain rule. We're going to bring that 2 down, subtract 1 from our power, and then take the derivative of what's inside. So this is 2 times t cubed minus 8 times 3t squared. So here's my derivative. And I see that that's a polynomial, so there are no places where that derivative does not exist. So all I need to do is set g prime of t equal to 0 and find out when, for what values of t, the derivative equals 0. So knowing that we can't get a product equal to 0 unless one of the factors is equal to 0, I can say, well, that means that t equals 0 or t cubed minus 8 equals 0. And I know that t cubed factors as t minus 2 times t squared plus 2t plus 4. So therefore, I get roots of t equals 2. And you can check the quadratic formula and find that t squared plus 2t plus 4 will give us no real roots. So the only critical points for this particular function are t equals 0 and t equals 2. Next, we're going to indicate the intervals on which g increases and g decreases. We're going to take our domain, negative infinity to infinity. We're going to let the critical points subdivide the interval. We'll subdivide the real number line. So we have three intervals that we're talking about. t less than 0, t between 0 and 2, and t greater than 2. So it's sufficient to just check one point in each of these intervals and evaluate the derivative at those points to check where is the derivative positive, where is the derivative negative. If the derivative is positive, then I know the function g is increasing on that interval. If the derivative is negative, then I know that the, the function g is decreasing on that entire interval. So again, we said that the derivative was equal to 2 times t cubed minus 8 times 3t squared. If I choose that first interval, t is less than 0. First of all, I need to pick a point in that interval. In this case, t is less than a 0. And then I'm going to evaluate the derivative at that point. So, and you can choose whatever point you'd want. In this case, I could pick, I could pick negative 1. So g prime at negative 1 is going to be 2 times negative 1 cubed minus 8 times 3 times negative 1 squared. And I know that negative 1 squared is going to be positive, so this is going to be positive. Negative 1 cubed is still going to be negative, minus 8 is going to be negative. So I've got 2 times a negative times a positive. So this is going to be a negative number. So therefore, I know that g prime on this entire interval for t less than 0, g prime is negative, which means that the function g decreases on this interval for t less than 0. We're going to pick a value t, where t is between 0 and 2. We're going to evaluate the derivative at that point. So we can pick the point 1. And the derivative evaluated at 1 is just going to be 2. 1 cubed minus 8 is still going to be negative. 3 times 1 squared is still going to be positive. And so my derivative 
at 1 is going to be negative again. So I can say that g prime on the interval from 0 to 2 is still negative. Therefore, g is still decreasing on the interval from 0 to 2. And finally, I have one more interval to check, namely for values of t greater than 2. So I'm going to pick a value of t. Let's choose t equal to 3. I'm going to evaluate the derivative at t equals to 3. 2 times 3 cubed minus 8 times 3 times 3 squared. This is going to be a positive number. This is going to be a positive number because 3 cubed, I know, is 27 minus 8. So this is going to be a positive number. So therefore, g prime on the interval from 2 to infinity is positive. So therefore, I know that g is increasing on this interval. And so to recap, I took my real number line, I partitioned the real number line based on the critical points, I checked values of the derivative at one point on each of those intervals. I found out from negative infinity to 0, the derivative is negative. From 0 to 2, the derivative is negative again. And from 2 to infinity, the derivative is positive. For values of t less than 0, the function g decreases. Between 0 and 2, the function decreases again. And for values of t greater than 2, the function increases. Now, we have a test that we can use with the previous information to test whether we actually ha have a local minimum or a local maximum. The first derivative test for local extremas is, is a very powerful, very useful tool. If we have a critical point C of a continuous function f on the closed interval from a to b, where f is differentiable at every point of a of the interval a, b, except possibly at c itself, if the derivative of f is negative for x less than c and the derivative of uh, evaluated x is greater than 0 for x greater than c, then f has a relative or a local minimum at x equals c. If the derivative is negative, that means the slopes are negative, so the function is decreasing up until c, and after c, the slopes are positive, then it seems reasonable that we should have a minimum, a local minimum at x equals c. Suppose instead the derivative is positive for x less than c and negative for x greater than c, then we have a local maximum. And again, an example would be if the derivative is positive, the slopes are positive, it's increasing before or for values of x less than c, afterwards the function has negative slopes, so therefore we have a local maximum. We have a third scenario where suppose the first derivative is positive both before and after, or the derivative is negative both before and after, then we have neither a relative maximum nor a relative minimum. Well, what does this look like? Well, um, I might have a situation where it's increasing before, meaning f prime is greater than 0, positive slopes. It flattens out, meaning we have a horizontal tangent line at x equals c. And then it might start increasing again, in which case the derivative is positive both before and after x equals c. And we could have a similar case for um, when the derivative is negative both before and after c. And in this case, c is still a critical point because the derivative either is equal to 0 or the derivative may not exist, but the function itself does not have a relative maximum or a relative minimum. So let's return to our example. g of t equals t cubed minus 8 quantity squared, defined on the real number line, and identify any local maximum or minimum values of g. So we said the derivative is negative, negative, then positive, which means that the function itself is decreasing, decreasing, and then increasing. The function is decreasing, 
and then there's a horizontal tangent line at t equals 0, and then it's decreasing again, and then it reaches another point where the derivative is equal to 0, and then it increases again. So therefore, we can identify that t equals 2 is the location of a local minimum. And in fact, this is an absolute minimum for the function. Okay? And at x equals or at t equals 0, we have a horizontal tangent line, but it's neither a, a local maximum or a local minimum. And if we take a look at the graph of the function, we see a horizontal tangent line at both t equals 0 and t equals 2. The critical point at t equals 0 gives us neither a minimum nor a maximum, but again, it's good to check there. It's necessary to check there, but t equals 0 gives a, an, absolute max, an absolute minimum.